And Nick, now we're talking about the girls' side of things. Obviously, a very competitive season. Maybe some surprise teams along the way. What has stood out to you most going into this girls' season? Well, first things first, you talk about uh, a shakeup in, in the landscape of high school hockey in North Dakota on the girls' side. And you have to look to the capital city first with, with the splitting of the schools there where the Bismarck, the Bismarck Blizzard dominated for so long. And, uh, you know, you see the split now where those those teams are now one turned into two. So that's been the biggest thing so far for me is, is just seeing how that is all going to play out uh, down the stretch and giving more girls the opportunity to play is great. And, and uh, letting some of the other teams maybe have a better chance at some championships for everybody else that isn't from the capital city probably would have to shake their head and agree. Of course, looking at uh, the landscape of things, you know, the one team that's really stood out on their hot start is Mandan, of course, on the girls' side. Uh, this is an up-and-coming program, I think, that, uh, that is uh, surprising some people, or maybe some people aren't surprised at how much talent they have already. It's interesting to see the progression of girls' hockey in general here, Phil, across the state. I mean, it, it came into a, a high school sport that was actually sanctioned back in my high school days, and I'm getting pretty gray here from time to time and in my beard. So, you know, it's been a while there, you know, back to the early 2000s. And, you know, the... The amount of talent, the amount of skill inside of North Dakota for girls high school hockey really is special. And it's, it's pretty interesting seeing a program like Mandan uh, kind of elevate that game and, and be one of those teams that will be at the top of the list maybe when the dust settles. Goaltending is always a big piece of that, and I think Mandan's got one there this year. Who are some players you're looking out for on this girls' side of things? Uh, I know there's, there's a curl down there at Bismarck Century that, you know, whenever you hear the curl name, that's a big one. But uh, other, other players that you're looking at, what are some exciting ones that you're looking on the girls' side? Well, yeah, Curl had 42 points last year, Phil, and, and was a player that dominated in the state. But Taylor Cope from Minot was an all-state selection last year. Uh, the one from uh, uh, Jamestown, excuse me, that I'm really excited about, Kirkby, she, she's a next-level girl as well. Um, so it seems like each and every team in the West region probably has somebody at the top of that list that, that is going to succeed, uh, succeed and excel. And I really look forward to seeing Kirkby and, and Cope play probably the most from Jamestown and Minot here this year. Of course, the big news with the girls' hockey season is that this state tournament is moving to the Magic City this year at the start of March. Uh, Nick, obviously, you're from the Magic City. That's got to be an exciting piece of news going into this season to see a state tournament be played at Mesa. I know you have more to talk about on the show here tonight, and I could talk forever on this topic here, Phil, but I go back to, I think it was 1994, I was watching the state high school hockey tournament. I was just a kid, and they interviewed Jim Peluso during the broadcast, and Jimmy Peluso at the time was... Uh, the godfather in the West region, if you will, for Bismarck hockey. And he was the head coach at that time of the Demons. And that interview, I, I remember it vividly, him talking about they need to move the tournament from the east side of the state to the west just to see what that would do. Change that landscape of, of the divisions as well was part of that conversation. But we finally get to see that this year, all these years later in 2022-23 here. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to make for an interesting, uh, interesting weekend at the Mesa Arena in Minot. That's a venue that holds about 2,400 people. In my mind, it's ideal for that tournament. It's, it's a primetime facility, uh, three sheets of ice underneath one roof, which makes it easy for, you know, those, those uh, consolation games and things like that to be played. It'll be really interesting to see what happens after this year with how well that tournament goes. And I have a feeling it's going to go really well with who puts those things together up here in the Magic City. All right, Nick, I want to wrap up this hockey preview or hockey, uh, you know, breakdown with a couple predictions from you. I'm going to start with the boys' side. Who do you think is raising the trophy at the end of the year? Well, uh, let's let's look at, at across the state. It's going to be hard to bet against Red River, the big red machine looking to go back to back again. In the West region, though, I would like to think that uh, that that's going to be a coin flip uh, come tournament time. That semifinal night of the region tournament will be one for the record books. But right now, with what Minot High brings back, I think that the Magi probably have the most depth in scoring. Goaltendings are a big question mark. I like Minot on the boys' side, but I'm sure Mario Lamaru watching this right now and everybody else in the West region, Mario, the head coach of Legacy Sabres, probably shaking his head saying, Legacy is going to be there at the end as well. So I don't know. It will be, uh, be a little bit of a dogfight. I don't think there's a clear cut, but if I had to put uh, a bet on it, I would say mine at high for the boys. And then if you could quickly give me a girl's prediction on the other side. I'm going Century. Let's see what happens in, in year number one. I mean, there, there's just so much talent there, a rich tradition. Uh, I've got Century uh, at the top of the list. All right, Nick, I appreciate you joining me. We can always follow you on your broadcast. You'll be calling a lot of hockey games this year, I'm sure. So I want to thank you for joining me on After the Whistle. Hey, great job with all you do. Thanks for covering uh, local sports and promoting these high school athletes, Phil. Great job, man.
All right. Thank you.